Hello, my beauties. I think I'm live. <laughs> ah, glad to be here. Welcome those of you who will be watching from the future. And I want to, if you're watching from the future after the live, then maybe skip ahead like just five minutes. I'd like to greet folks as they come in and just um, hang out a little bit, but you're also welcome to stay from the beginning. So beautiful. Hi, Vintage Sims. Yes. Well, you probably made it because <laughs> I put it up late last night. So there was some warning. So good to see you, Vintage. And let me, I just want to check one thing over on YouTube. And let me just see, hopefully it'll still stay muted. So get a cup of tea. We're going to be starting really soon, but I want to, okay, yes, it shows us live. Perfect. Perfection, perfection, perfection. Okay. Who else is here? Don't be invisible. You're welcome. Don't hide. Okay. So the title of this, which I never noticed. I'm using StreamYard, which is a wonderful tool right here. If any of you are YouTubers, it really gives you some options. Um, even the free version gives you a lot of options. And one of the things is I can put your comments up. So if you'd like your channel highlighted or anything like that, you know, just as long as it's not something weird, of course. But I'm noticing it does give me my title because sometimes I'd have to go back to YouTube because I forgot exactly what my title was. Okay, I know my topic, but what title did I put that I thought was like click worthy? Okay, so what I put, and it says it right up at the top, which I never noticed, spring health. Okay, the focus is gonna be on spring and self-care tips, nurturing your yin essence. I am gonna deliver on that. That's the title now, but I'm gonna update it, okay? And say hi in the chat. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Even if you're new, if you're new, say you're new to the community. And so the what I'm going to update it to be specifically with spring, like I said, that is absolutely true. But rather than, I'm looking at my whole notebook I have here, rather than so much the yin, I'm going to emphasize for the season. And that's a little bit different, okay? So yes, where are you from? Where are you tuning in from? I was gonna, there were like two words that mushed right there. So we're, I'm gonna start talking about spring and say hi now before I go on. All right, Ameristar, hey, welcome, yeah. Okay, Ameristar says, I'm glad you're here. <laughs> I am glad you're here, okay. Perfect. So this is going to be really helpful information. Some of it may seem basic, but I always say, are we doing it? And I say, we included myself. Okay. But it's, it's stuff that works. Now I want to share with you actually, before I go on, um, I was suffering from vertigo. I've never had vertigo in my life ever. Ever. One time I got dizzy, but that's like low blood sugar. And then I fainted. <laughs> it was very dramatic. Okay. I have never had vertigo and I was able to get it under control. And in fact, I use my acupressure points that I teach in some of my programs. I just did them over and over and more so. And what I want to talk with you about today is I looked at what had I done to create, you know, there's cause and there's effect. Okay. So that's really important. And if you're here, you're one of those women, especially who wants to take good care of yourself. You want to um, not be on a lot of drugs or any drugs, unless you absolutely have to. Um, you want to stimulate your own healing power. Okay. So give me a yes if that is you, like you're interested in those things, because I am going to be talking more about that. The videos where I talk about these things don't tend to do as well as where I just talk about chakras um, or, um, or divine feminine affirmations, you know, and I will keep doing those, of course. But in terms of chakras, I'm going to share something that a lot of people who even they've read a couple books or they or, or one book and they talk about the chakras 
you don't want to start doing serious work with your chakras and your subtle energy unless your physical energy is right, okay? A lot of people will not say that. They don't even know that. They're just like telling you what they read and like, oh, just do this, do that. So don't work with your chakras seriously and intensively until you first get your health um, pretty like stable, okay? Okay, the sun is coming out now. It was also just hailing here, like, like large marble size hail, just like pummeling my house. So liver stagnation is what we're going to talk about because the liver is, so get your notebook, okay? The liver is the energy, liver gallbladder that governs spring. Now, I always get a boost. Let me know if you're like me. I always get a boost, even at my age. It used to be, I noticed when I was younger, I'd feel an energetic boost, right? As spring, before it was officially spring, but right, I'd feel it. I'd be like, whoa, um, I guess that's a spring fever. I don't know. I don't know if that is literally what spring fever means. But if you're fairly healthy, you should feel that boost where if you're coming out of winter, it's colder, it's darker. And then the change, like early on, you, your body feels it, okay? You may not be aware of it. If you're super busy, goddess, if you're super stressed, you may not be aware of it. But there is a change. And each season has an organ system in our body that comes to the fore. And so it is liver, gallbladder in the springtime, okay? And I'm gonna tell you how to know if, and, and you, we all go through these cycles. So say you live you know, in a place that's warm all the time, you're still gonna cycle through the energy of the various organs. Again, this is your health and this is super important if you have this awareness. Hi, beautiful love, welcome, welcome. So holistic health, things you can do yourself are what I'm going to talk about. So just keeping that first in mind, liver and gallbladder, okay? So first I'm gonna share with you how to know if it's imbalanced. I'll tell you right away, the chakra it's associated with is actually the third chakra, um, which has to do with fire, if you're aware of the chakra system, um, the navel chakra, because it's that area. Okay, liver, gallbladder. So let's talk about if the liver is stagnant, then I'll, I'll tell you some to-dos. Okay, so stay tuned. I have four different areas that I'm gonna tell you different things you can do. Um, and that will be it. And then I'll wrap up. All right. So let me know how you're doing today. I'm going to have some water because one of the things with the vertigo can be hydration, 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 hydration. And so that's been important for me. Um, it's really trying to get enough hydration in because I just don't naturally tend to have a lot of thirst. And I'm sure you goddesses know, you know that they say you can't always just go by your thirst, especially where we're in like heated environments. Like our ancestors were outside more. There's more moisture, right? Of course, there's sun, you're working, so you can lose a lot of moisture. But so liver stagnation, do you have it? So I'm going to give you some symptoms, okay? Irritability. And these come to the fore now. So let me know in the chat if you notice any of these things as the seasons are changing, okay? So this is about our bodies. There's a beautiful video. I'll try to put a link below that we are electromagnetic beings. We are not separate from the earth, the seasons, the planets, the animals, the trees. We are not separate. Western um, science and philosophy since maybe the 1600s has... Um, told all of us that we're separate, discrete individual beings and that we're the universe kind of around us isn't alive. <clears throat> of course, you know, trees and stuff are alive, but that there's no, they, they don't talk anything about energy and this is false. Okay. So we are intrinsically, and it's changing now, we're connected to the environment. So we want to stay in balance with the environment. So irritability, muscle tension, Okay, muscular tension now, especially at the shoulders, um, the head and the neck. Those areas, do they get tense on you? Do they get tight on you? And notice, now that I'm pointing it out, it may happen more in the springtime for you, okay? So muscular tension, 
all right? Shoulders, especially neck and head and upper back, okay? That is liver, gallbladder, energy. And I'm gonna use the word energy because it's not just the organ, it's like the meridian and energy flow. And it can be broader than just the organ. So I don't want you to think I'm just talking about the organ itself, okay? Any questions so far? Um, tension, headaches, migraines. Migraines are a real um, liver, gallbladder, meridian symptom, okay? And as you know, in the West, we will, what do we do? What do we do when somebody has a headache? We immediately, understandably, try to stop it, but we don't go to the root. So it... So what we're doing, I love this analogy. It's like, you know, the warning light in your car goes off for something, it's lit up or it beeps. And what we do in the West is like take a hammer, <laughs> be like taking a hammer and just breaking it. Like, oh, I fixed that problem, it's not beeping anymore. No, you didn't fix the problem. You fixed the indicator of the problem. The indicator that something was wrong with the car was trying to tell you, but you broke that. So now you think everything's fixed but is it really? Okay. So goddesses, if you have irritability, muscular tension, especially in the neck, the shoulders, the upper back, tension, headaches, migraines, especially migraines are liver referred to as liver fire rising. So the energy is coming up when it shouldn't be. Okay. Irregular periods, painful menstruation are also linked with this liver meridian stagnation. Okay. PMS, um, I used to have pretty bad PMS. <laughs> um, sleep issues also, because you're not able to relax. So the liver gallbladder very much has to do with relaxing, with the body relaxing. Okay. That's actually what it governs. It's trying to get the body to relax. Oh my gosh. My light keeps changing so much. I have a skylight like those, the regulars of you, you can see it. Like this isn't just a huge light I have. I have a skylight, sometimes good, sometimes bad, depending on what the sun is doing. Fatigue and things to do with the eyes because um, the liver and gallbladder, they relate to the eyes as their organ. And so have you ever seen people with really yellow eyes? Now, Western science is like, oh yeah, well, some people, of course, some people's eyes, the whites are a little bit darker. That's fine, especially people more African heritage. But I'm talking about when the eyes, you've all heard of jaundice, when the eyes have a yellow tinge, that's like a pretty bad sign. Uh, that's pretty severe, okay? Um, and also blurry vision, blurry vision. Let me know if you have any of these or you're making any connections now. And I'm gonna talk about what you can do. Okay, so I'm not just gonna point out the problems. I'm gonna talk about what you can do. Okay, good. Are you still with me, beautiful love? Ameristar, how are you doing? Vintage, how are you doing? And the shy ones that are not saying anything. I am going to close some of my tabs because I do not, I wanna stay bright and clear for you guys. And hold on, I hope it truly is the case. So I'm just closing some other tabs. All right, perfect. So those are the symptoms of what we call liver stagnation. Okay, so stagnation just means it's not working as well. The energy is not flowing. So health really at the base level is about circulation and flow. What do I mean by that? Your body can fight most things off. It can eliminate things, right? It destroys things that shouldn't be in your body and it can fix and renew. So there's change. That's what we want. So stagnation, think of stagnation as, you know, if you go to a stream and the water's flowing beautifully, right? And it's sparkly and it's fresh versus you go to some streams where, or like a pond where you can see a film on top, right? And everything is just stuck. There's twigs, there's no movement, right? You've all seen that. That's stagnation in nature. And then in us, that stagnation is what I'm talking about, that liver stagnation with the irritability, headaches, muscular tension. And I wanna tell you two things that you might not be familiar with, again, so you can evaluate yourself, okay? So this wood element, the liver gallbladder, they link it to wood, like the, the fresh, like when the upward energy of a tree and those beautiful green, light green leaves 
early in the spring, that burst, that's that upward dynamic energy, okay? So if you feel you don't have that, this can be a way to begin to work with this, okay? Um, so yeah, put any questions in the chat, put a, um, a cue in front of it, okay? So the things you might not know are that the wood energy governs your tendons and your nails, your tendons and your nails. So when I was teaching yoga in person, like years ago when I had my studio in New York City, if somebody came in and they were really stiff, literally from that, I could tell a bit about them. OK, you can tell that's why sometimes you see things where maybe you'll see a video where they're like the master could. This is the best example I can remember by looking at somebody's shoes, tell what their health was. What does that mean? Things like the shoe is worn down on a certain side. OK, things like that. So if somebody came into my class and was super stiff, the first thing I would say is, are you a runner? And they often were. So often it was that they were a runner. But it's related to this liver gallbladder energy in that the tendons are stiff. There's a stiffness. Um, when you see somebody's just really tight, I would link it back to that liver gallbladder energy. So what are some things you can do? Let's get to that. What can you do to um, help? Yeah. On sleep management. Oh, definitely. Well, this will help with the sleep because that's a great question. So the change of seasons the change of seasons is a tricky time for everyone. That's the time when you should give yourself more care, goddess, is when the seasons are changing because it's a transition, right? And so nothing's settled. It's not It's not definitely spring or your summer. Like it's, it's a changing time. So that's a great question, the change of seasons in general. And sleep management, this is going to help. So the first thing I recommend, and it's probably because I, I am also a liver type. You can be like a type of person and my energy is very much liver energy. And so when liver is positive, it's dynamic, it's goal oriented, it's activity creative. Okay. So these are the good things. Let me, let me share them again. So when your liver energy is balanced, you feel a sense of ease. You feel fairly relaxed, but Liver can also really drive people. The, the workaholic, it's coming from a liver gallbladder imbalance. Like, like, I'm a bit like that. If I start working on something, I'll just keep working. I won't eat. I'll, I won't stop to eat. I won't notice things because I'm so focused. Of course, in the West, now my friends like to, oh, yeah, hyper-focused AD, ADD. I'm like, okay, new name. Same thing. It's, it's a drive from the liver energy. OK, so the organs bring an energy that they have and to our psychology. So if your liver is balanced, the, the meridian, the energy, you have ease, you have flexibility, physical flexibility, as well as mental flexibility. So if somebody's super rigid, let me know if you know anybody like this. If somebody is super rigid, trust me, there's something going on with the liver gallbladder energy. OK, your creativity flows when you're balanced. And you, you kind of have an outlook where you can look forward and plan, okay? That's when everything is balanced. But many of us, so again, this is no blame, many of us have an imbalance. Why? Because our foods, especially in the U.S., have so many additives. This is something that really, really bothers me because especially in, our, especially in the Black community and just if you're poorer, you're going to get bad quality food. Goddesses, I was just reading, and I've heard this over years, people who go abroad to other countries, they lose weight. They're like, I ate the same. I was on vacation. I went for a month. I ate and I ate and I come back to America and I find I've lost weight. They come back to America, they gain weight. A lot of even that, that putting on weight is from poor quality food. Hey, Monique, welcome. It just really upsets me. It's one of my, my pet peeves because... Um, it takes so much money in America to eat well, just regular food, okay? But so the first thing you should do is movement. So I'm giving four solutions for transitioning safely, not just safely, transitioning into the spring season well, 
Okay. These work, especially if you're already healthy or a little bit imbalanced. Obviously I'm not a physician. These things can work with whatever else you're doing with your physician. Okay. So movement. Why? The liver has a lot to do with movement and, and helping blood flow and the mus and the muscles getting blood as well. And so when you move, I promise you, you're going to, if you start having regular movement, especially that's smooth, it said that smooth movement. So like dancing, swimming, bicycling, running, um, as opposed to like maybe, um, what's that ball? What's that? What's that? Is that paddle ball? What is that? Um, racquetball, like things that are a little abrupt are a little bit less good for moving that liver energy. Smooth, bicycling, running, brisk walking, swimming, anything that has a rhythm to it that moves the liver energy. And just think about it, just simply common sense. When you're really like, you're upset or you're, you know, and you do exercise, like admit it, don't you generally feel better? That's a big part of this. That's a big part of this. The liver, like I said, when it's stagnant, you will be irritable. You'll be ready to punch somebody. You won't have your calm and your ease. Okay. So this is really important to understand this, that you can work with this. So start movement and it's going to help in these ways. It's going to help your mood. Like, like I just said, absolutely. It's going to help your immune system right? The immune system gets triggered with exercise because it's almost like an army. It's not almost like it is an army. Your immune system is your army. You just, if you don't exercise goddess, you have your army just sitting around on their ass with their weapons. Like do, 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 do. what are we doing? Let's play video games. <laughs> right? I like that analogy. I just made that up. Um, actually that's, pro that's probably in some text as well, but so you want your army moving. You want your army like ready to go. Okay. So immune system, your circulation, all of that linked and detoxing movement through sweat, through again, the blood flowing through the spleen, the liver, all of those, the kidneys gets the body moving and just being outdoors is very calming for those of you with liver stagnation. The green, just think about it. The green of the trees is very, very soothing, especially in the season into spring. And like I said, even if you're not in a um, a place, a seasonal place, you know, it's still, your body still has to go through these cycles. Okay. So add some movement in, of course, start gradually. For me, I'm walking. Like in the chat, share with me, what movement do you like to do? What type of exercise do you like to do? And like I said, for this Weight training isn't as good, not saying you wouldn't do weight training, but something again, that is more rhythmic movement. So what, what types of exercise do you guys do? And walking is enough, just make it fairly brisk to really get the blood moving. So yeah, do you swim? You know, a lot of us worry about our hair with swimming. Um, what do you, what do you do for exercise? Or what could you, Monique? Great. Yes, yeah, swimming is wonderful. I actually only like swimming. I don't like swimming in pools, but I like swimming in uh, fresh water. I love being in water. Swimming is very good because it's very rhythmic. Okay, the second step you can do to help um, balance your yin, but to stay in balance with the spring season is add some food. So I'm just going to give you some general um, foods you can add. I might make up a, a list and send it out to my email list of, I might make like a little ebook or a little, like a little cheat sheet on this. So, um, let me know in the chat or actually in the comments, if you're interested in that, I'll come back and I'll post if I make one. Um, so, but I'm going to give you it anyway in the video. So the food's the main thing. What type of food? Oh, dance and walking. Yes. Yes. I love, I'm, you know, my African dance continues and they kick my ass. The kukua, I love them. Even though they use the same music a lot. <laughs> like they, they, they literally have, check out kukua African dance. She changed it to kukua fitness. So good. So good. Fun. You're like laughing the whole time because you're, you're dying. So you start laughing. So yeah, dance and walking. I love it. Power walking and tree hugging. Yes, my people. Yes. <laughs> and tree hugging. I love that. I love that. I literally did want to hug a tree 
I just lean on the tree. I wanted to hug a tree. And then this dude comes by and I'm like, oh my God, can't I just get a little privacy with my tree? Okay. And you know, I'm like, just keep walking, keep it moving. So add greens. I was going to have you guess, but just add greens. I mean, think about it, right? Again, that color green is associated with the liver and gallbladder. Springtime, what happens? Everything bursts out. Everything comes back to life. We are the same. So add in your leafy greens. Add in your leafy greens. Crucial, crucial, crucial. And I feel like that's what's missing from a lot of our diets. I really do. You need more than you think, okay? Especially if you do eat meat, which most of you do. You, it's almost a counterbalance. So your collards, your kale, and don't believe people are like, oh, kale was like, there's this whole other thing now going around about kale. Um, oh, it was invented for like pigs or cows. And, and then they're like, it made them sick. So they thought they'd give it to humans. You know, I was just, there's something about it, either Ben Franklin or, or Lincoln. I think it was Ben Franklin who was writing about kale in his gardening journal. Like kale, kale isn't new, okay? Anyway, um, leafy greens, okay? Bok choy, any, any green, but especially, does anybody know which green especially is good for your liver? I wanna give you a chance to share. My people, my tree hugging people, what specific green, leafy green is especially good for the liver? I'm gonna give you a minute to see if anybody can get it. So we've got movement and then we're gonna add certain foods more into our diet for this season. Oh, and so, okay, I'm gonna wait because there is a spinach. No, a spinach, I eat spinach, but if to any of you, especially older goddesses, but again, in our communities, there's, we, there's kidney stuff, kidney issues. Spinach has a lot of oxalate. It is quite high in oxalate, so it's not, that you shouldn't eat it, have it a couple times a week even. But if you um, are having kidney stones, your doctor would have said to you, don't eat uh, as much spinach. And there are ways around that as well. Honestly, to be really honest with you, the doctors, if you have kidney stones, they give you a list of everything that you've been told is healthy. They're like, don't eat that. And I'm like, well, if I don't eat this, I literally is like, this is my diet. What it was, oh, collard greens, good guess. We got collard greens, we got spinach. Nope, it's one other one that I don't know if you're going to guess because most of us don't eat it. Most of us don't eat it. And you'll see why when I tell you what it is. Because um, what are the tastes we don't like? There are certain tastes we don't, we don't like, right? And if, this thing I'm going to tell you has a strong taste. My kidney stones, I know for a fact, were caused, I think several things. Nope, not Swiss chard. I love Swiss chard because that's a mild taste. I never drank water. I literally, I'm doing, especially when I was younger, my 30s, I was teaching yoga, you guys, Ashtanga yoga, power yoga. I'd have like a, one glass of water a day and a cup of coffee. And literally that would be what I drink because I didn't drink soda. And I felt fine. So I was building up for that. Um, through and it happened also during COVID was when it came to a culmination and I was very inactive during COVID as we all were. So anyway, I'll tell you the green that really helps um, the liver is dandelion greens and they're bitter. Dandelion greens. I am from Jamaica and what we call uh, there's cirrusy and this happened to me last year. I did a video like this. I, I couldn't, I don't know the name of it. The, the other name of it, but we would in the spring have to drink that. And it's the nastiest tasting thing. And I, I'll never forget, I was little, mom or dad gave it to me to drink and it was so nasty, I spit it out. You know, you know you're four years old, you're like, <laughs> and I got a whack. <laughs> I was like, I was like oh, why are you making me drink this? It's so, oh. you know, they were trying to like torture me, but we, we do that in the spring. It's called cirrusy. Somebody here who's going to watch this is going to know the other name for that. But um, what I'm talking about is a food green and it is dandelion greens. Get your dandelion greens. They are bitter. Okay. They are bitter. So you mix it in a little bit. So you've got movement, but food, add greens. It's a great time to do a detox. This is the best time of the year. Welcome. If you're just joining, we're talking about spring health for women and how to nurture your yin but really more about 
the spring is more of a time for detox and cleansing. So that's why I'm changing the video content just a little bit. Okay, as you go into spring, this is the time for you to go to like your Whole Foods or Whole Paycheck, as my friend used to call it. I thought he came up with that, but I don't think he did. But anyway, um, Whole Paycheck or your local health food store and get yourself a detox, or get yourself some sort of cleanse, especially a liver cleanse. Again, I'm not a physician. Check with your doctor. If you have any illness at all, then don't do it because it might be too much of a load on your body. Okay. That's the other thing that people don't realize when they do a cleanse. It is a load on your body. Imagine again, like if I like to give analogies. So you're like a factory and instead of the factory, just the workers going home, you're saying to the workers, no, we're staying overtime and they're going in and taking everything apart, and cleaning everything and they're working. So when you do a detox, which this is the time to do one if it's right for you and you talk to your doctor and you're already coming from a healthy base, um, just know you're going to need more rest and you might not feel good. A detox, you will not feel great if you're doing a detox often, okay? Depending on how congested or stagnant the liver is. Great. I'm getting some, yeah. Yeah, cod liver oil too. Yeah, that was the other thing, Monique. It was so nasty. Um, I think I could take cod liver now. I don't think it would, because I think, but I think that's more what we may not have known, but that's like vitamin D, I think, and like the fatty oil. So it's good for you. But yeah, I, ugh, it's another thing. I just, I don't, I can't specifically speak on the cod liver um, and the time of year that that's good for. I think it's also a bit of a laxative. Am I right? Monique, is it a bit of a laxative? Yeah, because it's a nat this is the time, Aziza, because it what and so let me give you a little bit of the concept, okay? Those of you who are with me, you have you have concentration, you can you can, you know, your concentration hasn't shrank like they keep saying that it hasn't become TikTokified, right? Um, the winter we tend to eat heavier food. Okay, even if it's just a cooler season for you, we tend to eat heavier, we're less active. So what happens is the body, when we have a cold, a lot of that is the body just putting out the mucus, basically the excess that was stored from the winter. Okay. And that's, oh yes. Okay. So Monique says, yes, indeed. Yeah. It is a laxative. Um, yeah. I can't speak on the cod liver relative to this, but yeah. Um, so springtime, when you see a lot of mucus and people get allergies, it's because we're sort of the body is shedding what was the excess of winter. Okay. It's cleaning itself. So this is a season of cleansing this is the best season to do a cleanse. Okay. So also sour taste, let me keep moving. So sour taste, add them into your diet. So things like citrus fruits, fermented foods, um, like kimchi or sauerkraut, any fermented food that's a little bit sour and sourdough bread. Sour is the taste that helps the cleansing. Now you don't want to overdo it, but again, it could be like for me, I, I find myself naturally drawn to pink grapefruit, right? And think about it. It's not as sweet as an orange and there's a little, there's a little, there's that tang and my body is just like, I'll suddenly be like, you know, I want some grapefruit. And what I do is in, I put in my water, I'll just squeeze some grapefruit, fresh grapefruit into the water and the water is so much more refreshing. Like try that. You can try also just putting some orange, you know, fresh, like take a slice of orange, squeeze it into your water or lime. Okay. So add some sour taste. That's, um, we're under food. And so if you have dampness or your mucousy, what does that mean? Like, what is she talking about? Dampness. Dampness is someone who we, who they tend to be a little heavier, though not always, more of a kapha type. Mucousy, phlegmy, you know those people. <laughs> I don't tend to be super phlegmy, um, but some people are. That's just, that's kind of how their body is. So if you have that, my warning to you is really avoid sweets. Avoid especially like pastries and super sweet uh, artificial foods. Okay, because that literally makes you more phlegmy, more mucousy, more congested. That is a problem for me. I've been doing better. I've had to really substitute fruit. Like I've got to have some sweet taste, but as opposed to having a cupcake, I'll have some blueberries. Okay, those are different. Don't let people tell you, oh, well, yeah, it's all still carbs. Well, no, it also, you need carbs, but it also has nutrients, phytonutrients, and fiber that that cupcake doesn't have. So it's not the same. I mean, 
most doctors and certainly nutritionists will tell you that. But in the average person's mind, they're like, maybe they hear, oh yeah, carbs are bad. So I'm not going to have like an orange or an apple. You'll be malnourished. Okay. So if you're damp, you have dampness or your mucousy, avoid sugar and sweets and instead add pungent foods like ginger. All my Caribbean people know we think ginger tea is a, yep, dandelion. Oh yeah, no, I had mentioned, did it just come through? Yeah, dandelion is the green. If you can stand it, put a little bit in, in with something else or like an, in with a salad. Um, or you could just take the herb, which I'm getting to. <laughs> okay, so let me move on here. Uh, if you're a mucousy person, add ginger, add garlic, add onions. But if your yin is depleted, meaning you're tired, you're you're dry, you that's what yin depletion is, which I kind of hinted I was going to talk about. But this, what I'm talking about, is more seasonal. Um, but if you are not, if you tend to be dry and and um, the opposite of mucousy, then don't do pungent foods. Many of you may not know, but ginger is drying. Especially if you do ginger tea from a ginger powder, you will literally find your mucous membranes dry out, your, your lips will get chapped, it's too strong. So I'm talking fresh ginger for those of you who have a lot of mucus and congestion at this season, okay? Fresh ginger, uh, garlic and onions, and they help to kind of move the blood and they're pungent. That's only good if you're mucousy, and damp. Okay. Acupuncture. Um, who, who watching now gets acupuncture? Yeah. Lemon in your water is great. Like the, you know how some of there's some people who just suck on a lemon. That's what I mean. When I can meet somebody and I can tell things about them based on that, there's some people who they just, they're craving that taste. I would say that the liver energy is stagnant in them because I know, I know people who are like bite into a lemon. They're craving it. Why are they craving it, right? So who gets acupuncture? I do, very, very helpful. Of all the holistic um, therapies, acupuncture is one. Oh, you do, Aziza? Uh-huh. That is interesting. You love to eat lemons, yeah. So you must be craving it. I have sometimes asked questions on here and nailed what the person has. Um, just looking at your photo, I mean, I get healthy. Uh, healthy vibe. Do you notice at all any of the symptoms I mentioned, like irritability, muscle tension, tension headaches? Do you get any of that at all? Period pains? Um, or And also like vision, sometimes even floaters. I'm just curious, Aziza. I eat limes a lot. Yeah, limes are a little bit milder. Yeah. So, you know, they're less sour. They're a little bit more of a sweet like it's just a gentler, but put it in your water. That's very good for you, especially this season and cheap, right? They don't have to be organic. Ladies, lemon, lime in your water, not really headaches, but muscle tension mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and irritability. Yeah, Ziza, because you look young, you're a young person. So, um, and this is for all of you goddesses watching this. This is the truth. We can get away with a lot when we're young. Okay. So this may not, you know, you're, you'll be cool for like 20, 30 years, but if you don't, if we don't take care of our health, it's when we hit our forties, late forties, late fifties, sixties, that like they say, what is it? The, the chickens come home to roost. So Aziza, yeah, but you already feel that muscle tension and irritability. Yeah. And that's why you're craving your body intuitively is trying to balance. So that's really beautiful, but I'm just saying, so for you, do some of the things I'm mentioning, okay? And also you can come for a um, consultation. I have that on my website and I can give you yoga posture specifically, as well as we can really talk about your diet. One thing like Aziza, I would say, I don't know if you eat a lot of dairy, but like for now, especially I take it easy on cheese. Like cheese is literally, my acu my acupuncturist said this to me. He's like, cheese is just phlegm. And I was like, ew, ew. <laughs> like, must you be so graphic, right? But any of you have had like different, sometimes like feminine issues, you know what I'm saying? It's almost like the word for it is ama in Ayurveda. Ama just means gunk that the body produces that it can't get rid of. And so he's like, yeah, cheese is just, you may as well just take that and just apply it. It's like very phlegmy. It's, it, and so Aziza, do you eat a good amount of cheese or no? I would lighten it up for the spring. 
you know, like, because that will help strangely enough with the muscle tension and the irritability because you're not giving your liver more work to do. So let me explain. Let me say that again. When you give your liver a lot to do, that's when you get problems. Okay. So for example, I did a lot of painting when I was younger. I was in art school and they didn't tell us, like, pretend this is a brush. I'd be like, the paint would be all over my hand. I then go eat something I'm eating. I got paint on my hand, like doing like that. Like that's why Van Gogh went crazy people. Okay. That's why he cut off his ear is because he was eating his paint probably. Right. And I'm smelling turpentine because we keep the turpentine in an open thing. We got our brushes, you know, and you're talking and the turpentine is just in the air. So my liver got exposed to a lot. Isn't that interesting? You see, this is what I'm telling you I'm doing here because I don't know Aziza. She's like, yeah, I usually consume a lot of dairy. Mm -hmm. How did I know that, Aziza? You literally told me, you know, you told what Aziza said to me is I love to eat lemons. And from her telling me I love to eat lemons, I, I figured all this out about her. Okay. That's pretty, like, that's pretty deep. Think about that. So Aziza and anybody watching who's, you know, she's saying she is feeling muscular tension and irritability, cut down on your dairy. The dairy your body has to work hard to digest it. It just does. Maybe not for everybody, but for most of us, for most of us. And so when you give your liver, like I said, it's like overtime, like the liver's working on that. And then you're doing other things and your liver is just like, you know, it's just like, I can't handle, you're putting, you're giving me too much. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Cut down on the dairy. Goddess, the dairy, a lot of times the underlying thing with dairy is it's very comforting. So sometimes we're going to our food for comfort sometimes, many of us, especially in the West, we eat, we eat because like it tastes good and we just, you know, we just, and then we have more and our food in America does not have as much nutrition as in other parts of the world. And it has more additives. That's not our fault. Okay. So if, if Aziza, if you were like in, um, someplace where they've got the sheep grazing and they're just making the fresh cheese, you're going to maybe have a different reaction. Right. And that's why it upsets me because I feel like it's, it's work to get your diet. Right. It's work. We have to work harder than we should have to, to just get decent food. Yes. Our food is very plentiful, but the quality is not there. The quality is not there. And then even if you try to buy organic, some people, especially in our community, look down on you. Oh, you're spending so much money on this. And da, 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 da. Or you just buy local. Like where I am, everybody's like local, local, because the food didn't travel from Mexico. It didn't come from Guatemala. It's fresh. Okay. So it just, it just makes me so, it just upsets me. Oh, Monique, I didn't know you're an artist. That's wonderful. That is what you wash your hands a lot. Well, what you should do, honestly, is wear gloves. If you are painting, have the thin, obviously not the not the dishwashing gloves, but the nice latex, almost like the surgical gloves. They're very inexpensive. You can get a box of like a hundred for really cheap, and you can reuse them. Get wear gloves, and then when you're going to eat, you take the gloves off. You still wash your hands, and then you eat raw dairy. I would think it's better for you, Aziza, but a lot of that depends upon your digestive strength because there are some issues, right? I think that's why some places ban it. There may be, because it hasn't been pasteurized, there may be particular things in it that then could cause a problem. If I were you, girl, I would avoid, I would really cut down on the dairy for now and maybe the raw dairy if you feel comfortable with it, you know? Yeah. So, um, so acupuncture, get acupuncture. It's worth it. If, if you find it too expensive, I am so blessed. Where I live, we have something called community acupuncture. This is like how they do it in China. Because the Chinese people don't play with stuff like this. They're not like, um, it's not like a spa thing. It's considered health. So in China, when you go for acupuncture, there'll be 10 people in a room. While in America, we're like, oh, I'm going for acupuncture. I have to have a private room. So where I'm able to go in my town, it's a, it's a nice room, you guys. And they put you in like a lounge chair. They've got, the lights are low. They put music. It's really relaxing. I mean, somebody will come in, you open your eyes, you look at them, you're like, oh, okay. And you just go back to laying down. And so they can charge less because they're treating like 
five people at a time. So look in your area for community acupuncture. I don't think it's that common. Um, also, if you're in a city goddess, go to their Chinatown. If you go to a Western, this is just true. Um, hope I don't upset anybody with this, but if you go to like an American giving acupuncture, they're going to charge more than if you find a Chinatown <laughs> where it's Chinese, where their population is Chinese people, they, I, they're going to charge you less. Okay. Because their pricing is for the community. Okay. New York city. Absolutely. If you're in New York city or Philly, um, any big city you should be able to get a little Chinatown area. So acupuncture, it works. And, and part of what I teach in some of my programs, I've got to plug my programs here. I have one, um, which I have to set it in the right place, but where I teach you acupressure points for your feminine health, okay? And so that is based on, and you've seen, I know you've all seen tapping, that's based on that in our bodies, there's like lines of energy and they govern certain things. Like here, I'm just gonna actually show you the same way, like with Aziza, I'm like, okay, your dairy is a problem. She's like, yeah, I eat dairy. I eat a good amount of dairy. Um, and she has the symptoms I was describing. Any of you who get headaches, my God, I'm so dyslexic. See that? It's hard for me to, because I'm seeing it in reverse. Headaches that run along the side of your head, that's gallbladder because this meridian that runs here, not in the middle of your head, but on the side and it goes down. Um, then I forget where it goes, it goes through the neck. But here, headaches that are on the side indicate liver, gallbladder energy, um, stagnation. So if that's you, think about that right now, right away start doing some of what I'm suggesting. Yeah. Oh, Sharon, they do. Yes. I am really, yeah. It's, it's just, you know, most Americans I'm thinking like, you know, we have this idea like, Oh, it's private. Oh, so let me explain. You don't take off your clothes. The guy literally, it's a man and his wife. They literally will treat because as I said, they're lines and you can affect, you could affect your toe by sticking a needle here, for example. So you just have to have visible your lower leg um, or your arms or he'll treat your face. So you're still completely dressed, but you're, there are other people in the room. They're all chilling out and you're just laying there with the needle. So that's a cheaper way if you can find that. I hope you can find that. So Sharon, that's great. Yeah, Chicago has it. I would think Chicago would have it. Um, any big city, I really, I'm getting Philly, any of you maybe in Texas, I don't know if they're China, they've got to be Chinatowns in Texas. Um, a lot of, I get viewers from that area, out in Oakland, out in California, of course, there's Chinatowns. Um, there's probably Chinatowns in Tennessee that I don't even know about, okay? And last thing we're going to talk about is herbs. And then if you have questions, put a Q, okay? Yeah, Monique, be careful. Um, like I said, my art teachers, in terms of warning me, they, I mean, I don't think they knew it wasn't a serious thing. You know, you're in a room with like 15 other people painting, all with turpentine. So everybody's got their turpentine jar. Turpentine, as you all know, is like very volatile, right? It's like nail polish remover. It's like that, you know, and we're just in there. So my liver has definitely been exposed to a lot. Houston, yeah. So if you can find, just go to the Chinatown. Don't feel weird. My herbalist, I would say a third of the folks are black people. And you see a lot of foreigners. I see people that I can tell they're like Russian or Eastern European because we know herbs work, right? You see what I'm saying? So it won't, so go to Chinatown. They'll be happy to see you. And you're going to save more money than if you go to a Western acupuncturist. Okay, and often they're gonna be better trained in the Chinatown, okay? Because I don't wanna offend anybody with that. I mean, actually when I say that there is training required, so there is a level of training in America, yeah. Um, what I'm saying is because it's culturally linked, I just, I just like to go, I just go to Chinatown. One is cheaper. The only problem might be their English. Again, and that may be a stereotype, my guy speaks English, but it's not great, okay? It's not great, but yeah. Oh, on the South side, they do hers as well. Okay. Where, what town is this Sharon? So wait, this is in Chicago. Yes. So having said that, yeah, there's a, like you have to, uh, acupuncture is licensed. So 
if anybody's sticking a needle in you, they, they have their license. I would check. It should be on the wall. So absolutely. That's great that she's doing that. Maybe I could interview her, Sharon. I'm going to, I'm going to look that up. Chicago Healing Center, South Side, Black and Latino. Oh, absolutely. What I was just saying though, <laughs> yeah, is I meant like not, not Black or Latino, but just if you go into like, um, like in America, I believe a, a Western doctor can study a little bit and get an acupuncture license. Okay. And then, but they may not know as much as the actual ethnic person is what I'm saying. Okay. And just in terms of cost. So I'm sure like this woman, she's probably charging reasonable. So absolutely. Yeah. I would love to know the name of it, Sharon. Um, yeah, absolutely. I was just saying, okay. Haji. Okay. Between going to a kind of, yeah, someone who's aiming for like an upper middle class audience versus if you did go into like an ethnic community where you can find uh, discounted. And for me in New York City, it would be just go directly into Chinatown. Um, and they're perfectly welcoming and the cost is low. Um, so finally, herbs. I'm just going to give you two, but I'm going to mention five. Um, I'm going to mention three that are more, I would say, go to an herbalist for them. So blue plurium. I'm probably not saying that right. It's in some formulas, blue plurium, uh, schizandra, and gentian. Those, you can find them in a blend. What I recommend always is get a blend. Get a blend, meaning a lot of us will just take one herb. One herb is usually not a good idea because every single herb, yes, it's natural, but it has a slight side effect, like a slight side effect, okay? For instance, it might be cooling, it might be drying, it might slightly raise blood pressure. So a good herbalist goddess will give you a formula that they have made for you or pre-made. So the herbs that you can buy, and you can buy them individually, yes, and it'll be fine. They're a little bit milder, typically. Or buy them in a blend is dandelion root, as we'd mentioned dandelion before, the leaf, but dandelion root, and milk thistle. Milk thistle also will really move that liver energy. Um, I hope this isn't too much information, but the first time I just randomly started taking milk thistle, I'm going to tell you a side effect that happened. And I think it was just pure milk thistle. I started getting all this mucus in my eye. Now, most people would be like, and my eyes, swear to God, started to hurt. At the time, I didn't know the connection with the eyes and the liver. But the, the herb was so strong, goddesses, that it, it was taking the mucus out, but it would come out in my eye. Um that didn't happen before. And it, and it stops if I stop taking the herb. And so I, what I had to do in that case, again, this was before I knew very much, I, I cut the dose in half and then it was okay. I still felt better, but I wasn't getting like literally gunk, like in my eye coming out because these herbs are powerful. Yeah. These herbs are powerful. Okay. So I generally recommend taking a blend because the herbalist has balanced it for you. If we just go like I did with a milk thistle and I think I took like two, it said take two. I'm very sensitive. Wake up, my eyes are like hurting and feel tight. And then the mucus, I'm like, what the fuck is going on, right? So these are what I recommend. Dandelion root, milk thistle, and the others can be in a blend. Blue plurium, schizandra, gentian. And you can find them at your whole paycheck or your local health food store, um, you know, herbs for moving the liver. All right. So that is what I recommend. Any questions? Any questions? Yeah. Put them in the chat. And I love Aziza. Thanks for sharing and like taking me through here. And let me put up what Sharon said. So I'm going to go back through your comments. This is great. And then I do um, my mindfulness meditation program is running and I have to go to that in a little bit. I want to plan, of course, and look at my notes for that. Um, I have been overeating. Yeah. Coming out of any cooler season, we tend to overeat. And also goddesses, there's the, I have never seen the world this dysfunctional. It's, it's beyond dysfunctional. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's beyond, it's not, it's not just dysfunction. Now, mind you, I didn't live through world war II or a direct war in my country. And I do remind myself of that. I'm like, there the, the probably have been worse times. 
<laughs> but still not in my lifetime. So Sharon says, I've been overeating, no cheese, dairy, or processed sugar, but lack of sleep has left me with brain fog, headache, stress. Yes. Sharon, why don't you book an appointment with me? And I'm going to put it once I end the video. Um, so you've been having brain fog, headaches, yep, stress, memory, sensory overload, yes. Also goddesses, I'll be honest with you, I know partly what caused my vertigo. I was on the, on the internet and I was using my eyes so much because my work is on the internet. I was working on my website. I was trying to update it for you guys and make it more clear. So the day that I did several things that created my vertigo. I don't know if I want to go into vertigo so much because it's not the, 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 you know, the theme of this, but it definitely still has to do with liver. I overate and my digestion is sensitive. I definitely ate too much food. Um, and then that it's not just inner ear. It can be inner ear or it can be multiple causes, but your digestion also, um, has an impact or your poor digestion. So, um, yeah, Sharon, come for a consultation. We can figure out what you can do because you can move these things out. Um, a yoga practice could help. Um, and depending on you, I could kind of tell you what type of yoga, maybe even come up with a little routine. It sounds like you have some impact. Okay, you said no cheese, dairy, processed sugar, but lack of sleep is left with brain fog. Brain fog is linked a bit with the stomach spleen. Watch me do this. Let's so I want to ask you, you've been having vertigo too, beautiful love. Yeah. I you know having said it's not connected. The yeah, I take that back. That was actually an error. Vertigo is connected to liver because the liver energy, as I said, has to do with smooth flow of energy and vertigo and dizziness is linked with the liver. So I apologize. I was wrong. It just came back to me. Um, so it's interesting. Like I said, I don't typically have this and it is the change of seasons. Like I said, it went from hail and yet there are cherry blossoms out. So I can see these beautiful pink cherry blossoms, yet it was hailing an hour ago, right? And the, and the trees are bursting out in green. So that transitional season. So yes. So beautiful love, do everything I was saying in there. Movement, add some of those foods I talked about. If you can get acupuncture and just look for some herbs, um, a blend from your health food store, or you could just go to Amazon. Yeah. So yeah, the liver is linked with dizziness because it means the chi is not flowing smoothly. And when the chi doesn't flow smoothly, you're, it's, it's almost like this, it's like erratic. So yes. And, um, let me know if you want me to do a yoga sequence specifically for this. Let me know in the chat, but also, especially after the video ends. So any questions, did you find yourself mentioned in here in terms of the symptoms, the irritability, muscle tension, especially with the shoulders, the neck, the head, insomnia, PMS symptoms. Um, what have you found yourself like some information that was helpful? And I'm just looking through the chat to see if I missed anything. And I, the link to work with me, um, let me just double check it before I give it out, make sure it's working. Okay. Viv as me, really simple, viv.as.me. And then what you would do is coaching sessions and it's the in the flow lifestyle coaching. Okay. So let me put that link in the chat because there's a lot you can do to kind of jumpstart yourself. So I'm going to put it in the chat and that's more the direction I'm heading is yeah, get an, yeah, get an herbal blend will help, but they're also, and, and what movement will you do, Sharon? Picture whether it's swimming, but yeah, if you want more personalized and you want to talk to somebody about what's going on, I also in that I give acupressure points. I give PowerPoints. Um, that you can do specifically for what you're going through um, from the hundreds and thousands of points that there are. So yes, I just want to put that up there that I do do consultations on this. Um, yeah, and the thyroid gland is linked, my love. Yeah, are you having thyroid issues? A lot of times it's linked 
Um, my Chinese herbalist was telling me the thyroid gland is often um, linked with reproductive issues. I think because it's just a hormonal balance. Mm. Thank you, Monique. Thanks for saying that. So please give a thumbs up. Okay. Please, please give a thumbs up if you haven't already. Thank you, Sharon, for that name, the Haji Center. Let me um, also, hold on, let me put it. Okay, just so I'll hold it. Let's see if it comes up. Wait, Haji Center, I'm going to do Chicago. Chicago, okay. Haji Healing Salon, got it. Okay, nice. All right, good. Okay, yeah, see, I started reading that. All right, new comments, questions. Tai Chi tapping helps a bit. Yes, Tai Chi would. Um, if you want a stronger help, I would, yeah, I would definitely do Tai Chi. Um, and yoga could definitely help too. Yeah, yoga would definitely help too. Yep, Schizandra, Gentian, Blue Plurium. Yep, those are some I mentioned. I mentioned the Gentian. I didn't mention uh, Schizan. Yes, I did. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Were you just retyping what I, yeah, Schizandra, Gentian, and Blue Plurium is spelled a little bit differently, but yeah. Um, I would, like I said, get a blend that's been made by a master herbalist. A lot of times when we try to do a single herb, over time we imbalance ourselves. I'll give you a really quick example. I have a, a friend who uh, lives abroad. She's American. She's living in Portugal. And um, she was just taking ashwagandha, but she was having symptoms. And just from observing her, I said, I found out she was taking ashwagandha. And ashwagandha is wonderful. It is a tonic herb. Many of you, have you ever heard of it, ashwagandha? But it has a heating and drying quality and it builds your yang quite a bit. And so for a woman, just ashwagandha by itself isn't balanced. And sure enough, she was having issues with dryness. She was feeling also, it can, it can just almost make you irritable. It's very powerful, but it's building the yang. So you want to always get a formula, go to somebody. Um, if your health is out of whack, then it's worth, of course, investing in yourself. Um, so yeah, I didn't talk so much about the, um, the yin, but doing, I'm just looking at all the notes I had written down for the yin aspect. A lot of it is, well, some of it's the same. Because of the season, I thought the liver stagnation issue was more important to get your in balance for the season. Maybe I'll make a separate one on the yin. I did already do a video on it, but of course folks don't necessarily see that. So let me know. Yeah. And dandelion and milk thistle. Yes. Those were the ones I put. Yeah, exactly. Dandelion and milk thistle are, like I said, I was, I also would not do a concentrate. Again, think of how we are in the West. Oh, that thing is good. So I'm going to give you 50% more. No. Sometimes they'll just extract what they claim is the active ingredient. Do not get those. Do not get those. It's better to get like the whole thing. What I'm talking about is you'll see it say on the label, oh, we've got extractives of this. This is the active ingredient and we boosted it. It's again that tampering with nature. Nature put it together in a certain way and there are other constituents to the herb that you think aren't active, but actually are, are creating a balance, okay? So you've really got to know and come in with a holistic mindset. So yes, I hope this served you. There are no questions. I think essentially holistic, yeah, you were answering. That was great. You were like answering and helping someone. Beautiful love, Sharon, Monique. Yep, any questions or comments before I close? So yeah, vertigo is linked with, um, I live in a small town, so I'd have to go to a large city in my state. Yeah. Oh, to get acupuncture. Yeah. 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 For acupuncture, it'd be hard in a small town. It's hard to find somebody for sure. Yeah. That's why I like to live <laughs> near a city not necessarily in the city, but near enough to the city. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah. So remember, eat your dandelion greens. I know they're bitter. I know. I know. 
So it was so good to see you, Ameristar, Beautiful Love, Vintage Sims. Who else? Yes, Monique. Who else can I catch? Ayana, FM Dance. Who else? Aziza. All of you who were here, who did I miss? Did I miss anybody else who commented? I did, yeah, and then Sharon, essentially holistic. So it was great to be here on your way out. Do give a thumbs up, let new YouTube know this was valuable to you. Just give you some holistic things you can do on your own that you don't really have to pay a lot of money for, right? And, um, oh, the Awaken the Divine Feminine course is, I have it on a wait list. Many of you had expressed interest. It ran once and I'm going to run it again. I want to put up the, um, I'm expanding it. So Awaken the Divine Feminine is my course. It's uh, very spiritually based. And let me, hmm, I think the best, you know what? I don't have a direct link and on my website. I don't have, think I have the page. I'll add it below. But for a lot of you, I think it would be really wonderful. Oh yeah, beautiful love. Yes. Um, they, I basically, it is about building our yin, tuning into our essence, building our intuition as women and getting more grounded and confident as a woman, and then connecting to a divine feminine aspect yourself. And so we do, we play with and include shamanism. I introduce doing shamanic work, which is working directly with spirit. Um, we do a lot of self-care. Um, body practices, so there's some meditation, but as I said, I'm expanding it from five. It's going to go, everybody said, I said, how long? Um, because I want to make it longer. And they said seven, some people said eight sessions would be great. I think I'm going to stop at seven. Um, so that will be coming up. And to do that, um, look below the video once I'm not live anymore and just get on the wait list because enrollment will be only from the wait list. And this is again, Awaken the Divine Feminine um, program, which is my newest program. So much love and I will see you again soon. I'll see you next Sunday.